found, this bird was found back in April, not too far from the park up near Grottoes, Virginia, which is just south of here in, in the Shenandoah Valley. Found in the middle of the road, they took him to the wildlife center not too far away, x-rayed his wing, but they did not find any shotgun pellets, but it looked like a shotgun wound. So they, they figured that he'd been shot at a pretty close range by, by someone with a shotgun. <laughs> they, uh, I can't imitate that uh, very, very well at all. They, they have more like like a piercing cry. It's like, <laughs> and what kind of hawk is this? It's not a hawk. <laughs> no, it's an owl. Now, how do I know? How do you know this is an owl? What what makes an owl look like an owl? Rounded face. Rounded face and eyes are facing forward. Anything else? <laughs> they look like they can turn their head all the way around. <laughs> Those uh, facial discs help to funnel that sound in too. Also, the location of the ear opens. One ear opening points up, one ear opening points down. If you look at the outer edge of the feathers here, you'll see that it's fringed or it has like a downy tip on it. Downy feathers are very soft. To make very little noise. With these fringed flight feathers here, reduce the friction. And when you reduce the friction, you have reduced the sound. So it takes its flight feathers and works them like this, it's combing through the air. So they can fly directly behind my head, and I would not even be able to hear them. Why is it? You hear, if you hear that call, who comes for you, who comes for you all? Uh, it's the bar owl. I just heard one. Uh, when it was Sunday night up in Matthew's Arm Campground. So they're around. The young, you might even hear the young, they have kind of a kind of a uh, strange call. They don't sound nothing like this. They often go, Ooh. Or they'll just have a series of they're just get, they're just getting, you know, just they're like coming of age with their voice. Uh, the one for hundreds and probably thousands of years, uh, peregrines were common in these mountains. Uh, places like Old Rag Mountain, Hawksbill, Stony Man, you had sheer rock faces or rock cliffs. They loved that. They loved to perch there and watch over their domain. They also, the peregrine falcon, loved to nest there. Now, DDT and, and some of those other pesticides would get stored up in fat, and during reproduction, when you have to draw on your fat reserves, well, then it becomes soluble in the blood again. It would go to the organs that, that were using the most blood, the reproductive organs, and there the egg laying was affected. So that being in those two classifications gives them more attention by the federal government and also by, by private concerns too. People realize that, hey, this animal is, is definitely, uh, definitely needs to get a lot of attention and, and needs to be taken care of because there's very few of them left.